YJ. We know him. We love him. Famous company having been making spirit props since 2007. Their first being the Chin Up Zombie, which was not great, but people kind of suck off. Side note, this fucker was $200? <laughs> they've been making props for about 17 years. And throughout that time, they've made plenty of different props that all you know, mostly make noise. Soundtracks within props are usually one of the most important things. It's one of the first things that you're really gonna notice about a prop, aside from its looks. And between different companies, there's plenty of different styles of their soundtracks, between the voice acting and the music and the writing of the phrases. And YJ, I feel like, has a very unique library and a very janky one at that. YJ was never one for excessive use of sound effects. If you take a close listen to a YJ prop compared to a techie prop, you'll see a very large difference in use of sound effects. Say, how about giving me a drink? YJ will usually keep it to one, except for a few exceptions, and Techie will just fill their shit to the brim. Now, YJ has always been kind of interesting with their sound because it's so different from each other. What I just said about them usually limiting their sound effects, that doesn't apply to every prop. Toxic Zombie, for example, has so many random ass sound effects pumped into his soundtrack. There's screaming, there's the bubbling, there's metal creaking, there's music, like, strikes, there's fucking zombie noises, obviously. It's pretty great. I think it makes a really good soundtrack, but it's very odd for YJ. Deadlift Zombie is the same boat. He has the zombie noises, he has the church bells. It's kind of it, but my point stands. I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the things that I find kind of interesting. Now, with the swinger props, they have mostly had all pretty much the same kind of soundtrack. It's just talking and then rope noises in the background. But Toothy didn't have rope noises. I just think that is so endlessly funny and a very interesting testament to how rushed he really was. Toothy's soundtrack is exclusively him talking, and unlike Nestor or Zombie Bait or fucking uh, the goddamn Swamp Hag, he just doesn't have the rope noises. It's something that you wouldn't notice until it's really pointed out to you, or you're thinking way too deep into it. I am of the latter, and I just think that's really kind of funny. YJ's voice acting is pretty great overall. You can tell that they only really have a couple of voice actors though. There's two of them that come to mind. There's the Pumpkin Nester Bloody Bag of Jokes guy, and there's the Caged Beast Zombie Bait guy. And if you kind of listen to a lot of other characters, you can really categorize them into one of those two categories of, like, even if they're not the exact same voice actor, general voice acting style and that's another thing that you really won't notice until you actually think about it is that like him and bloody bag of jokes especially are like indistinguishable from each other in terms of their voice acting why do i have this stupid grin on my How face about giving me a drink? they are like if you took their phrases and swapped them around there would be no difference in their audio at all YJ did do a few props where they didn't make the audio back in the day. 2010, it was Zombie Barrel and my homeboy Bone Collector. I'm not sure why this was a thing that happened, but YJ, or Spirit making YJ do this, they licensed Seasonal Visions to do the audio for Bone Collector and Zombie Barrel, and that resulted in a Mike Reynolds doing the voice acting for both of them. I know he did Bone Collector, I think he did Zombie Barrel as well. And those being some of the only YJ props with proper background music that I think was probably made specifically for them. If not just some obscure stock track from somewhere that I have not been able to find. Along with that, they also have plenty of other sound effects. Bone Collector has various screams and creaks, and then Zombie Barrel has the creaking of the barrel, among other things. 
And it's just really interesting to me that they chose those two in particular to specifically license SVI to do, because it isn't like those were the only two YJ props that year. Caged Beast and Crated Mummy also came out that year. By the way, Crated Mummy, side tangent, he has the best YJ speaker I've ever heard. I don't know why he sounds so good. Can somebody tell me if my legs are packed in here? It's such a shame they couldn't give that speaker to somebody like Poxic Zombie or fucking Pumpkin Nester or Zombie Bait or something because Crated Mummy sounds stupidly good. I don't know if All Boxed Up does. I don't have All Boxed Up. I would love to have All Boxed Up. He is so silly. I kind of like him more than Crated Mummy, to be honest. Ah, in the box, he said, what a dummy I am. But I do have Crated Mummy and I do know that his speaker is great. Anyway, I still don't know why they did that, but I'm glad that they did that because that audio for both of them added a lot to their characters. I feel like if YJ did their audio for both of them, it wouldn't have worked nearly as well. Because YJ's, again, their voice acting is good, but usually it goes into two categories, or, and also just the general lack of sound effects, you know, I feel like it wouldn't really work for Bone Collector and Zombie Barrel. They're both such bombastic props. They did have some others with really nicely done background audio though. Flaming Black Widow, for example, has a bunch of sound effects in her background, and I think that they work wonders for her character. It does make me wonder if YJ did, their, uh, did her audio or if it was Spirit themselves, because sometimes Spirit themselves would take the reins on audio. Especially now, that's something that they do more than ever. They ha I don't know if they had done it in the past bunch of years, but I know that now more than ever they do that quite a lot. I just think YJ is a really interesting company and I think that their audio is par part of that. I really do like how YJ does their audio though, typically. Typically. There's some exceptions out there, but overall, YJ's audio is pretty good. I just think that they have a lot of quirks and YJ as a company has a lot of quirks as well that I might just go into on in a future video, but I just kind of wanted to talk about this uh, because I wanted to post a video and I didn't have any other ideas. Bye.